Welcome back to Dirty Little Secrets. I'm Trisha Hirschberger. Is it possible to bring someone back from the dead with science? And what would that mean if we could? Is there such a thing as too far when it comes to scientific advancement? Is there a line we should not cross? Today, we discuss the real life implications of the story of Frankenstein. <laughs> Today I am joined by Lon Harris, Steve Zaragoza, and Anna Laurie. Yay. Thank you guys so much for being here. <laughs> sure, we're um, not sure. well, the yeah. Yeah. Hey. Hey. Well, I was clapping for you guys. Oh, so. I was clapping for me too. Okay, no, I was, okay. Since we're all clapping for Lon, Lon, go ahead and tell everybody at home uh, who you are. I'm Lon Harris. I created uh, Frankenstein MD along with Brett Register and Bertie Sue. Uh, I also work on uh, DC All Access, the DC comic show on YouTube. Woo. And a show called What's Trending. Hey. hey. Steve there goes. Tell us a little uh, bit about yourself. Well, I work at a Del Taco in Simi Valley, okay. and mm -hmm. uh, I'm the general manager. And it's a tough job, but Great. somebody's got to do it. And Steve Zaragoza. Thanks for being here today. You want me to say who I really am and what I do? Yes. Okay, I'm I'm Steve Zaragoza. I also am a host on SourceFed mm -hmm. with tr the lovely Trisha Hirschberger over here, and uh, I am I play Iggy DeLacy in Frankenstein MD. Yay! And yeah, that's that's me. That's my that's me. I'm Anna Laurie. I play Victoria Frankenstein on Frankenstein MD. I'm real good at Tetris. Now we're going to jump into a part of the show called Fact or Fiction. I'm going to tell you guys a statement. You're going to tell me if it's fact or fiction. Ready? Fact. Mm -hmm. Mary Shelley got the <laughs> idea that electricity could reanimate a corpse after watching a friend of her father's get struck by lightning. Um, fact or fiction? Oh, wow. Wait, I, didn't Joe's video kind of cover this a little bit? It did a little she bit. Got, but it wasn't, she didn't watch a friend of her father get struck by lightning. Right. It Come was, on, Anna, you got this. It was that her, um, she was, potentially had her overheard at a party that they were using, oh, what is it? Shoot. She, was it, she heard about, no, that was the, that was the um, dissecting corpses from jails. That wasn't. It was not electricity. This is right. good content. <laughs> no, this is great. Come on, guys. Think. I, well, um, well, I'm going to say, well, it sounds like since you guys are like, yeah, but. That sounds like fiction. So There's maybe no way she saw someone. I'm pretty sure it's fiction because I'm pretty sure there was an experiment that somebody was doing where they were making like a little frog leg kick. And she, like, with electricity, and that's where she got the idea. Oh, and right. Not, that's right. That's right. And it was not being struck by lightning. It was, a, it was purposeful. So I think this yes. is fiction. So fiction, fiction, fiction. Steve. fiction. Let's go Everybody for fiction. says fiction. The smart ones say fiction. It is indeed fiction. Oh. You're correct. The friends of her father's were performing experiments both right. on uh, people that had died in jail or people from jail and frogs. Yeah. Yes. So yeah. Because to that write... was around the time that like doing science in like a theater was a thing, right? Right. Yeah. yeah. So they like showed it, it off. Performance. Um, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And actually, the one of the first experiments we wrote into Frankenstein when it was just Brett and I was the frog leg experiment because we thought, oh, oh what a nice, cool. what a fun knot. And then the science advisor at the time was like, you guys are idiots. Nobody would ever do this in a lab. Like okay. this is a hundred year old experiment. It's right. <laughs> <laughs> but it's called <laughs> film. Like, I know. That but was, that was always... But he's dead and his legs kick. Yeah, he's yeah, like, no, yeah. it's so yeah. visually cool. He's obviously alive. Yeah. He feels like a little frog leg. They didn't land. Number two. Electricity can bring a dead body back to life. Fact or fiction? Fiction. I mean, that's gotta be fiction. Discuss that. That's gotta be fiction It's or... got to be fiction. <laughs> okay. I, I know this one is fiction because, again, when we were writing the show, I was like, and then she'll put can the... Can bring a dead body back to life. Can bring a dead yeah. body I back to life. I know that's fiction because death is irreversible. Mm -hmm. But you're Victoria <laughs> Frankenstein. You don't believe that. <laughs> <laughs> I know that's fiction right. because you can't bring things back to life. I mean, look, is there yes. more of a reason? Well, well I was saying we, we had, like, we wanted to do something with how would you use electricity to mm. reanimate. Like, what what's the most scientifically plausible theory behind it? Mm -hmm. And there is not a there is not a good one. That's right. why we ended up going with cryogenic. Well, Are you guys like, ready to have your minds blown? Well, because I was, wait, is it fact? No. Fact. It's not fact. Even without a heartbeat, brain activity, breath, or even blood in the veins, and hours after clinical death, scientists have been able to reanimate the corpses of dogs by filling the veins with an ice-cold salt solution moments before death and then using electric shock to reanimate. Blood begins repumping through the veins, and the dogs have been brought back to life hours after clinical death. Like brought back to life, like they're alive they're from alive. then on, or they're like moving around they're while there's electricity. No, like they're alive with blood back in their they're veins, back and like they back. Run around in the park and they mm -hmm. rovers and Rogers back. Sorry to use your dog. It's actually what they're doing now. It's, they're advancing that what? science now as a means of instead of like cryogenically freezing someone, 
They're like, if you wanted to do that, they could just like freeze your body to such a temperature that they could then use electricity to, to like get everything back it. again. My wow. mind is blown. All right, guys, fact or fiction? Scientists are at the point where they can clone a corpse and bring the clone to life. Clone a corpse and bring the clone to life. Well, yeah, yeah. Wait, they can. I'd say true because. But here's the thing: they they just take the DNA and then make a living co uh, clone, right? Yes. They don't make another corpse. Yeah. Of course not. <laughs> so it, a great example would be um, your great grandma passes away. Scientists could take a piece of great grandma's corpse and make you don't another you great, grandma. great grandma. But would it uh, would it be like? As a as a baby, yeah, right. Or they're, would it be like, like, oh, yeah, that's like, what I was saying. They're gonna like, make full grown question. grandma. Right. That's, so a that's, question. that's what the I assume. The question is literally, is cloning possible? Well, because like, right? because, because it would be like, the fact that it's, it's what else would you do? You well, hold on a second. Can you clone from dead? <clears throat> yes, cloning is possible. They've already cloned. Right. So that's what I'm saying. Is like, if cloning is possible, then yes, that's possible. But here's the thing. But but she's talking about a corpse. That's something that's dead. So we're thinking about what Anna just said. Yeah, but that's what I just said. So but all you need is a cell. So yes, we're thinking of the implications of cloning. Like we don't know enough about. Cloning to know if it if you need to be alive in order to grab vital cells for cloning. No, I think we do. I'm going to say that's fact. I'm going to say it's fact as well. I think it's also fact. It is fact. Yeah. In 2008, a mouse killed and frozen in the 90s was cloned successfully. So it have been dead for right. over 10 years. A uh, little film called Jurassic Park. We reached out to Twitter and asked you guys. What should we learn from Frankenstein? Is it is the lesson don't play God? What is humanity, etc.? And Sapphire at Fire's Bloodlust, cool Twitter handle, mm. says that sadly in the end it is humanity that is the real monster. Beautiful. Yeah. A Beautiful. lot a lot of people come back to that one like that well, one of the quotes we see a lot is that you know, like, knowledge is knowing that the monster that the that that Frankenstein, Frankenstein is, is the not. monster, but wisdom is knowing that that No, no. Knowledge is knowing Frankenstein is not the monster. Right. right? That Frankenstein okay. Is, yeah. Wisdom. wisdom is knowing that Frankenstein is the monster. And and a lot of people ah. a lot of people take that away from it, which I I mean it's definitely it's definitely in there that it is like humanity sort of fails the creature. But there's there's so much. I mean it's such a rich text. I think you could take yeah. a lot of lessons out of it. Yeah. And that's what's interesting mm -hmm. too is we get a lot of comments where people like they think the book is about mm -hmm. this thing that mm -hmm. we're not doing as much, and so they're like, well, you can't do it because the book's about this thing. Like. Uh, Womb envy is a big one where we yeah. get a lot oh, that like yeah. it's about men wanting to be able to give birth to and they can't. So this and, yeah. scientist figures out a way to do it in a lab and like you know take superiority over women in that way, which is interesting and in there. Yeah, but just did not, that factor into you casting a female Frankenstein? Not, I mean, not, we were aware that we were kind of going against that tradition, sure. but there were so many other elements that interested us about having a female. Frankenstein that we just thought, well, we'll lose that sort of theme, but we'll have all these sure. other themes to play around with, so mm -hmm. it'll be okay. But there are people who write me and are like, I can't take this adaptation seriously because you're not dealing with the womb envy mm -hmm. issue, which is the whole book. And my thought is there's like hundreds of interesting threads you could pull from that book. You yeah. can't there's please so, everyone. Right. Another there's great so uh, quote is, a bird in the bush is worth two in the mouth. Or, hand. That's a that's mm -hmm. a fantastic that's, is that a, Is that a Mary Shelley original? Did she coin that? Well, it could very well be. You feeling okay? God, it's real hot in here, isn't yeah. it? Okay. Anna, as as someone who's playing Frankenstein, have you ever thought about the moral implications for your character, or do you think that your character feels the moral implications? Um, I don't think, I don't think Victoria feels the moral implications. I think she's a character that is used to being in control and doing whatever mm -hmm. it takes. And so even when things start to go really wrong, she still is kind of like holding reason at bay. So she's okay. almost like logical to a fault, but also at the same time kind of irrational. She's sort of creating her own logic and living by that. I mean, that's also that's part, of, that's part of the character's, I think, sort of journey in the book and mm -hmm. in, in our show, is to realizing like, at first it's just, do it because you can, and like this is an opportunity, mm -hmm. and it's just curiosity and ambition. And then it's it's uh, it's not really until almost the end of the story that it's like the weight of what yeah, really, that, it, that he's done he's, or not she's done yeah. uh, sort of comes home. And, yeah, and so yeah. that human nature comes back to you, comes back at you. When we're talking about the idea of playing God when it comes to science and a character that really just wants to achieve for achievement's sake, there is that debate in the scientific world now of you know. 
one side sees it as playing God and messing with things that shouldn't be messed with, and the other side sees it as advancement, advancement in knowledge at all costs, and it's better that we know about it, and they see the people that say, oh, there's moral implications here, or you're playing God as kind of um, naive or religious fanatics. Where do you three personally I, see yourselves involved in that? So I feel like if we if we had stuck to the should we shouldn't we debate of of science with the impl- the moral implications, mm-hmm. if if people had said if if we had all agreed that like science trying things with science and playing God mm-hmm. was wrong, I think we'd still be throwing rocks at simple kids. Right. Like, you I, know, I think we. Yeah. Religion has has historically held science back since the beginning it used to be punishable by like you know law if you were practicing science you could be like killed or imprisoned or there's a lot of I think it's always been um, uh, it's scary because yeah the more I feel like the like the more knowledge crosses over uh, the more religion is backed into a corner mm-hmm. and so I think that is part of it you know I think the playing God aspect but um personally i don't um i i would say knowledge I, so you don't think you don't think morality cost. has any say no, in what's I happening I mean, in I science i mean it would be interesting to see what happens if someone did bring a person back to life like mm-hmm. maybe the same person you know and then that yeah i mean and obviously i feel like there were some some very suspect ways of of, of learning mm-hmm. about anatomy and learning about science and learning well, about the human body like, we were talking about those theatrical yeah, yeah. Uh, autopsies yeah. And stuff. right right and i was actually reading a book about um cadavers mary roach uh wrote this book about corpses mm-hmm. and she was talking about how you know back when uh people were just learning about the anatomy and they were d- trying surgical procedures to try to help people when they probably just had anxiety or something they were trying to remove something right. from the human body like like hysteria right right <laughs> let's drill a hole in his head and the demon will come out that'll make him stop hating god but like right. basically like they would they would experiment on people that just didn't have money to go and pay for like the snake oil, okay. basically. And so they would get the uh, right. I mean, yeah. they, snake oil. They, 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 it's a real thing. They would they would get Expensive. these like the people in the medical community would mm-hmm. basically watch these these like down on their luck guys be operated on without anesthetic without anything like and yeah. just basically like it was like a torture like a medieval torture scene yeah i mean i think that and, like, but in the name of science in that? the name of right. science and that's the thing that's what i'm trying to say like i think there were some methods of of of, of why we are where we are in science that were very suspect and very fucked up but mm-hmm. i think they were necessary obviously for us to get to where we are now i just worry that i mean because there is such a pushback against like evangelicalism and, and, and religion and sort of seeing that as a foe and like, no, science should be able to do whatever we want because, you know, it, it's, it's become an either or. And I don't think that's really true. I think there are a lot of issues to consider when you're talking about like some of these scientific questions we're asking in some of these methods. And it's not just, well, if you're religious and in, in sort of dark ages, you oppose it. And otherwise you want scientists mm-hmm. to just be able to do whatever they want. Like to me, the whole idea of like AI is, is creepy. Like, that mm-hmm. one day we could have create something that's so smart that it can just keep creating its own things and on and on and on, and then we're sort of out of the picture. Mm-hmm. And it's like, we, we are almost sort of there. Yeah, we're getting like. there for sure. Yeah, like but... To me, that's not necessarily a like, oh, but my God says you shouldn't do that. That's just like, guys, maybe you just shouldn't do that. Like, Okay, right. yeah. But the other camp would say technological <laughs> advancement at all costs. Right, well, he, right. well I mean, if that happens, I, I think it, it's like, you know, humans are going to end at some point. We've mm. only been here for a, a tiny, tiny mm. window. We've only been sneaking. Right. We don't have to, like, no. push ourselves out the door. Right. Uh, yeah, <laughs> I know, but... We can hang out at the party so, a little longer. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Would creating... Say we reanimated a corpse in the Frankenstein story, what ha- held some truth to it, if we started doing this and we were creating these monsters that were then more powerful than humans, mm. would that be a way of pushing ourselves out the door? Well, I feel like if they were going to do something like that, there would be some safeguards in place. Like, I feel like there would be some, like... Wait, you mean it wouldn't well, be just, like, on our show? Like, <laughs> like, uh, uh, you go away. <laughs> well, yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> Let's leave this room and leave the monster yeah. alone. We don't oh, know what's going to happen. But, no, it. Uh, <laughs> I feel like there would be some pain, some some intense pains mm-hmm. taken. Lock them in the lab. To, yeah, lock them in the lab. Everything will be fine. I feel like if there are people in the world reanimating corpses as we speak... 
I feel like those people <laughs> are covering their bases. This isn't Dawn of the Dead, or this isn't okay. like, you know, where, where I mean, yeah. but who knows? But who knows? Yeah, you know. yeah, I mean, yeah, I mean, the other thing is like, it's silly in the Frank Guy story that he's like, I found an eight foot human to reanimate. You know what I mean? He's like, let's find the most powerful thing. And then, <laughs> and then even in our show, we're like, let's make his bones stronger. Let's make him. Mm-hmm. Well, because everything. wasn't the idea that but, they were trying to make like a per like like someone who was super strong, but then it had the intellect of like a like a. Yeah, the idea was mm-hmm. that in our show, I mean, there, there's a different sort of understanding in, in Frankenstein, which is just it's going to be easier to reassemble this body if it's right, bigger. Right, it's literally, mm-hmm. it's bigger. Right. And so I in in our show, we made it more like, because he... Which makes sense. His body got so mangled, we were like, we well, they're going to... Yeah. The experiments along the way to get to the reanimate the corpse are just like, could we make him theoretically like stronger, faster? Right. Yeah. Could we fix these injuries and make him actually better? But in Young Frankenstein, yes, they want to make him mm-hmm. smart, just, They want to give him an enormous mm-hmm. Von Stucker. Yeah. Right. Well, and then even if, <laughs> say, for creation and safety's sake, like Steve said, there's precautions being taken. Yeah, Say someone wanted to reanimate a tiny weakling of a corpse to be, to be you know, cautious. Like, we're not going to, like, reanimate a corpse army. You know what I mean? It's not like we're, it's right. like they're going to do it once, like, or it, I don't think it's possible. I just want to clarify. I don't, yeah. I don't, okay. I think bringing actual life back into a person and especially having them be the same is, like, I think there's no chance of that. Ever. Right. No, I don't, no, what, no. You think ever? I don't, bring people back to life? I think it would be more like you upload your, your thoughts into like, uh, yeah, oh, yeah. like Transcendence. No, yes. <laughs> I mean, I don't that know, guys. fantastic <laughs> movie <laughs> on which I've based all of my understanding yeah. of computing. Uh, <laughs> well, look, yeah. we, there's still a lot about the human brain we <laughs> don't yeah, actually know. Yeah, there's a lot know. of stuff we don't know. We, yeah. But, right. but I, I don't know, I just think. But I think like, we can all agree if you were going to reanimate a corpse, like an out of shape 12 year old boy would be perfect. <laughs> yeah. Like, he's not going to. So, What's yeah. he gonna so, do? So yeah, so here's the thing. It's like it's like, well, if they do it, they'll do it once, they'll see how it goes, and if it's like and if it's like, oh that he's fine, then maybe they'll keep doing it. You know what I mean? Oh, but then if, if he's like a Frankenstein monster, like if he's Frankenstein well, yeah, monster, you would monitor. Be like, okay, let's kill it and right. don't do That'd that. That'd be like the New so, England Journal of Medicine our t- like, headline and be like, like reanimating a dead corpse, colon, part one, seeing how it goes. Well, like, like, here's, 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 yeah, it's like it's like obviously we've shown that like you mm-hmm. can the body still moves with electrical impulses yes. after yeah, sure. death, right? Yes. So like maybe we make like a battery powered human that's like walking around. Why not? But but like why? Why do you want that? It's a dead body. It's just it, it's gonna because keep humans decaying. are yeah, dumbass. Well, <laughs> so, I'm sorry, it's just but look, gonna, like it's gonna keep. Like, well, the reason why is when because when cells die, they die. Right, like, but I think just... that, but I think that the the question is, is is it possible? Because we're humans are so obsessed with their mortality, and they're very obsessed with like, mm-hmm. can we conquer death, and we don't want to die, and blah 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 blah. Like they, that that I feel like there would be ways to figure out, like like Lon was saying, like they would create a bionic body or something, and they would upload that person's consciousness, and that would right. get you know on. We're into already like a robotic at the point where we something. can like translate some of your brain waves into like visual, like you can use, you can digitally transfer some of the stuff already. Right. So like to me, the future mm-hmm. is gonna be like, you could take your consciousness and put it in a computer well, I don't think that's and then that. your I body don't... dies, but you're still like, you know, hey guys, what's going on? And I so, don't think that's let's hang possible. out in second life. I don't think that's possible. When we were talking about maybe the possibility that the cautionary measure is uh, reanimating a 12 year old boy, say, um, Colin Barrow brings up a Did good point. Did you hear him say that? Yeah, I, but I, I out just, of shape 12 I know, but out just shape, hearing it again sounds boy. super perverse to me. <laughs> yes, man. let's reanimate a 12 year old boy. <laughs> he won't be able to tell anyone. He will do whatever hey, I want. <laughs> that was Lon's example. Yeah, he won't right. tell anyone. At Barrow C says that any being you create wants all the rights that you have slash won't settle for less. So even if we were to reanimate something that say is not as powerful, wouldn't it then be natural to assume that they would want all the same freedoms that sure. the creator has? And what could that lead to, potentially? Well, uh, to, to circumcise, to not circumcise, baptism, to not baptize. <laughs> that would be the first thought of how yeah, to be why not? Yeah. Do we get that? How do we get, do we get them a social security card? Do they become a member? Okay. Where are, they, well, are they American? Did you, well, and here's the other thing is, uh, did, I mean, do they get all the stuff that that, the, that they were? That's, that's a moral implication. Well, right, that's, that's yeah. Right. I mean, that's yeah. sort of what we're saying. what they're is... like when they come back, right? Like, right. Like, I mean, do we have the right to say that this kind of life is, like, not on the same less, level? Yeah. yeah. You know what? Are you they know? still into shrimp cocktails? Yeah, yeah. Like, do they like her sandwiches? Did you guys see what, what David Fincher said about Star Wars this week? I'm going to take it on a little tangent. Go right. for it. Take he it. He was saying that the movies bug him because it's C-3PO and R2-D2 are slaves, and that the whole story is, like, you're watching... This whole story through the filter yeah. of like these two sentient, because obviously they think and feel yeah. and have emotions. Robot literally means slave. 
Yes. But, but like you don't think of Star Wars in quite Literally. in quite that way. Like yeah. you don't think of you think of them mm-hmm. as like they're part of the gang. But you don't think like, well, yeah, but Luke owns them. Like they're That's his. a good point. And like what do they want to do? Right. They what don't do really they, have agency. They're just, they're just dragged, dragged into this along. adventure. Yeah. Right. And mm-hmm. so that's kind of you you don't really think about it that way. But yeah, if you create, you know, robots or machines that have that kind of sentience where they have like a full palette mm-hmm. of emotional responses, then yeah, like you can't really tell them what to do. They're well, just like it, people. It, it, it's mm-hmm. kind of like how now, like we did a story on SourceFed a while back about how, what are the social implications of creating sex robots? Right. And like, what are the social implications? <laughs> Hard-hitting of, news. <laughs> and, uh, but then what are the social implications uh, and moral implications of creating child sex robots that have yeah. no soul, that don't belong to a family, but still satisfy the needs of perverted, awful people that want to have sex mm-hmm. with children? Is that... You know, uh, illegal. Should that still be illegal? Because it's like a robot. It's not like someone that has feelings or something. You know, so it's like well, these right. were. And so there, there was this big summit right. with with uh, scientists and politicians, and they're trying to figure out what are the the rules for sexual mm-hmm. robots. Right. It would our, be really mean to make those robots to give them like artificial intelligence. <laughs> that would be right? They don't need it, and it would just be like, oh, oh guys. Look at the Simpsons. Why yeah, was that program like, to feel pain? Oh, <laughs> it makes no sense. Oh, my God. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, so, I mean, but that's the thing. It's like, if we're creating something from scratch, whether it's a robot or a human, what 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 rights does yeah. that thing have? And how, and how mm-hmm. far... Yeah, what are the right. rules? What are the rules? I think Steve has been pretty clear that he feels like the the place for morality in the science discussion is in taking precautionary measures and you know making sure that you're safe like you said mm-hmm. you know it's it's important that we have some type of guideline and yes. some of that opinion um, but just kind of final thoughts to wrap up Anna um, pertaining to science and pertaining morality? to if if in real life someone was able to reanimate a corpse it's 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 so, it's hard to have an opinion because there are so many variables. You know, there's like, mm-hmm. we, we just have no idea. Um, I really, I really, I see how it goes, is my opinion. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Let's just but so you're, you're goes. still of the opinion of we should try it and then deal with the aftermath? I, I, I'm like, as, I mean, as far as science in general goes, I, I think it's a, a good thing and I think figuring out um, how the world works should continue and we mm-hmm. should do it as long as we can, you know, but I don't like necessarily like think that again, why? Like why do you want to bring something back from the dead? Like I, I guess okay. I understand like the like the conquering of morality that you were saying, but it just it seems like a waste of time to me, kind mm. of. Mm. Okay. And for you Lana? Did you think that computer making computers was a waste of time? Bringing something back from the dead. Like what like why do you want to do that? It, it, I like, think it's because someone out there wants to be the first guy to do yeah, it. Yeah, not even like be not dead. To be not dead like, sounds great. You just wouldn't have to be dead. Yeah, like let's talk about death yeah, but super fast. But there's like, but here's the thing. It's like, it's like that's gonna. It, it's just gonna. What are you gonna do? Like after you bring it back from the dead, like how long is it gonna live for? Like what right. quality yeah. of life it's gonna be? Yeah. Here's the thing. If you could bring someone back from the dead, and it, it's just like you wake up, like oh hi guys, that was weird. I was dead for a second, but now I'm back, and I get to be 21 forever. You what know, does that like, mean? Yeah. Yeah. Like if, okay, if that. Well, you wouldn't yeah. get to. I know no. 21, 21 forever. forever. I'm like, now we have immortality. Yeah, so that's, that's different. We're <laughs> talking about vampires, yeah. or are we talking about? You would still like. I, age. I'm just saying, like, well, because here's the other thing. Well, yeah. Again, like, what, what? If they, if you die of old age, why do you want to come back and continue being old? You know that's what I mean? That's a good There's point. So many, that's like, a good point. You don't this is why do we that. gotta transfer you to a different. Do- right. right. That's yeah, like work. But here's the thing: is like that's like that's like I like if I take a like a movie that I have and I put it on a computer and I stop editing it, then the movie's done and it's just there, and that and someone else can go and watch it, but it's not, it's like your consciousness isn't going to keep growing in a hard drive. You know what I mean? You're not going to yeah. keep learning and thinking. We don't know. I mean, we could, but I mean, yeah, but, like, but, but today. But that is an artificial intelligence. If you don't have a body that's having experiences and creating experiences and, and thinking. But, but, and but, but here's the thing. We have, we have the technology now for computers to automate everything and to even organically, digitally yeah, create yeah, new concepts. No, it's not you concepts. though. It's not you. It's not you I mean, thinking but, and learning but, and stuff. It's a computer imitating but if your you, let's say Let's say you could write a program that would essentially be the natural progression of growth of a human body and the natural progression of intelligence of a human body. You could literally write a program that would do that over the span of 80 years, 90 years, hey, why not a thousand years? That program could conceivably be created. They could be creating that right now and it could accurately create the organic process of growth. 
Or we just load your brain into a simulation and we just like matrix that shit where you just you don't know that your your life you right. think your and life just, is just, just ongoing and we're just this organism and like you're this just brain like brain in well, a jar not somewhere. even necessarily it's just a computer that thinks it's a person. But I mean, where's your life. where's your consciousness coming from? Well, you, we just took it out. Whatever you know, we like transferred your just brain. Take it out. Alive. We just take I love it. Out. it. I think it's possible. <laughs> we take it out and then we try it out. So, Lon, <laughs> your yes. thoughts <laughs> when it comes to <laughs> the possibility of bringing people back to life? I mean, I I'm all for I'm all for trying things and, and and exploring these issues and and I don't even mean to imply like I don't think we should do that kind of stuff or, or artificial intelligence or anything else I think the main thing I feel like is I wish that we as a society prized scientists to sort of have these discussions more among among themselves and, and it was okay. this was a thing that people who had studied and learned and had expertise in these issues got to sort of navigate and I would love for them to navigate these issues publicly so oh, we that'd be hear fascinating. what they're thinking and, yeah. and what's going on but I think too much we we sort of in America especially we kind of think well everybody should have an equal say in what we're doing like the mm. guy on the street who runs the you know local grocery store and the triple PhD who's an expert in everything like those guys should be able to talk on the level and be like I don't think you should do this and that guy's opinion matters and like mm. that guy's opinion doesn't okay. matter as much to mm. me so yeah. mm. like I would love to have that kind of scientific discussion but I don't think that means like dummies like me who don't know anything about science right. should get like to, to like see people who know about it right I want to see all right. of the and experts getting look, together yeah, and talk right. about it because that's when really fascinating things happen right yeah, yeah. wow yeah Awesome. So that being said, for you guys at home, whether you own a grocery store or have a triple PhD, let us know in the comments your thoughts on the possibility of using science to bring humans back to life. Um, if you think that morality has a say in that discussion or if it doesn't, why or why not? Please let us know that in the comments. Um, so guys, if they want to see more of you, where can they see more of you, Anna? Um, I'm on Twitter at on a train and I have a new web series coming out in the next couple months called Natural 20. It's a Dungeons and Dragons web series and I'm very excited about it. Yay! Yeah. How about you, Steve? Uh, for me, uh, you can catch me weekly on SourceFed and SourceFed Nerd on the YouTubes and also at Steve Zergos on Twitter. And then I'm doing a bunch of stuff in the future. Also, I have a personal channel on the YouTubes. It's just youtube.com slash Steve Zaragoza. And I got a cool Halloween, uh, yeah, short coming out that's going to debut on that channel very soon. That actually, this woman was in. <laughs> I wasn't. No, was I was. This woman was not in it. <laughs> well, I write and produce a show called What's Trending. You can find that at youtube.com slash what's trending. I also write DC All Access, very uh, location appropriate being in a comic book store. Uh, that's at YouTube slash DC Entertainment. It's a weekly show about everything going on in DC Comics. And uh, Frankenstein MD, we're hoping to bring, her to bring it back for more episodes. Yay! And I'm, Yay! At, and I'm on Twitter at LONS. Thank you guys so much for being here today. If you folks want to check out more of the stuff that I do, you can do that on youtube.com slash nerdychick5, or you can find me on Twitter at thatgirltrish with no I in the girl. Big shout out to House of Secrets for letting us film here. Yay! Yay. House, House of House Secrets! Secrets. <laughs> and make sure that you check out the latest short from Fridoverse here on this channel. Thank you guys so much for watching, and we'll see you next time.